Welcome to another episode of the VM Blog Expert Interview Series. And today we're excited to be speaking with Julian Chesterfield, the CEO of a company called Sunlight. Julian, welcome. Hi, right, thank you, David. So as this is our first time speaking, uh, before we jump into any of the specifics, can you maybe start off by just giving us a quick background on the company? Yeah, sure. Happy to. So, um, yeah, we're a uh, UK-based company. We're, we're based in Cambridge in the UK, um, uh, where our headquarters is, but we have a presence in the US as well, so we're very active there. Um, technology has been in development for quite some time, um, you know, well over four years, uh, and we actually launched our, our first product to market uh, in uh, Q3 of 2019. Um, a bunch of us came out of originally from the Zen uh, hypervisor development space. Uh, we were the, 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 the team that uh, created the, uh, the Zen hypervisor, which was you know, a core part of uh, you know, cloud uh, foundational infrastructure originally, uh, particularly AWS. Um, and uh, we've, we've got some great uh, financial backers as well. So we've raised uh, just under $9 million uh, in uh, capital from um, uh, Robert Bosch, um, corporate VC, and Open Ocean and uh, Lloyds Bank uh, development uh, capital in the UK as well. So uh, we offer a, a next generation hyper-converged infrastructure platform, uh, and that includes the, the hypervisor stack, software-defined storage, software-defined networking, the full management plane, and uh, all of the automation around that. So the infrastructure as code platform uh, that, that plugs into all of that. Uh, and what's really different about Sunlight is that, um, you know, compared to traditional data center hypervisors, um, Sunlight can operate with uh, real bare metal performance. So in many cases, that can be up to almost 10 times faster, particularly with high performance NVMe flash storage and high performance ethernet technologies. Uh, we really focus on the efficiency and the footprint of the platform. So it's it's super thin. Uh, we can consume around a fifth of the system resources of the other um, kind of uh, incumbent platforms that are out there, uh, which means that it can be you know super dense, uh, and you can we can run also on you know resource constrained you know far edge hardware environments uh, on uh, you know Intel and uh, you know embedded Intel and uh, embedded ARM processors as well. Um, it's also really easy to deploy and manage, uh, so it takes around 10 minutes to, to install a physical node and get everything up and running. Uh, and we also have, we're integrated with the uh, AWS marketplace, so it's very easy to consume uh, on demand from AWS. And, and finally, just to, to give a little context on, on Sunlight, um, you know, we, we really focus on uh, you know, demanding workloads like artificial intelligence and big data and analytics. Um, and, and really, you know, one of our core, our real sweet spots is is around, you know, bridging the edge to the to the cloud. So deploying at those kind of far edge environments all the way up to that cloud infrastructure as well. So VM blog audience members are, you know, well aware of the hyperconverged infrastructures and why they're so popular in the data center. You talked about uh, your, your super density and uh, <clears throat> some of your other, you know, sort of differentiations, but uh, what's different about, you know, the requirements talking about hyperconverged instead of the data center at the edge itself? Yeah, so, you know, it's an interesting question. Uh, you know, I think the, the simplicity requirement is still the same. Um, so, you know, being able to, to manage that infrastructure, having that sort of single pane of glass is, is still the same requirement. It's just that the you know, traditional data center infrastructure simply can't work as well on constrained edge devices. Um, you know, some of the key requirements that we see from our customers are that, you know, they wanted to be able to run uh, demanding applications at the edge, particularly artificial intelligence with things like TensorFlow, uh, for example, you know, and, uh, you know, video image analysis, um, uh, algorithms, uh, analytics platforms like Kafka, um, and, you know, IoT frameworks that, that really need performance and low latency. Um, but the key differentiation, I think, with these edge locations and these sort of micro data centers is that they have very limited space and power. So, uh, you know, and, and, you know, a very limited cost envelope as well per site when you're deploying, uh, you know, large numbers of these uh, infrastructure sites. Uh, you know, the cluster might be sitting on a factory floor or on an oil platform, for example. 
Um, so, so they want to be able to deploy these small clusters, but clusters that are still very uh, highly available. Uh, the other thing I think is that you know privacy, security, and compliance are, are really important in these environments. Um, you know, often the data can't leave the location where it's generated, uh, or it needs to be sufficiently processed before it can be safely transmitted and, and uh, you know moved into the cloud. Um, the, the other thing, uh, one of the other differentiation points we see with Edge in particular is that the, these locations often need to be able to work even in a disconnected mode for substantial periods of time. Um, you know, often there are sort of unreliable data connections uh, or they might be intermittent uh, to these sites. So the sites need to be able to run autonomously um, and be locally manageable, um, uh, you know, but, but also uh, to be able to uh, to tie that into a larger management framework as and when uh, the infrastructure is available. Um, another thing that we've seen with these kinds of edge environments over the core data center is really around the skill sets. So you don't have the same sort of skill sets that you'd have in a data center. Um, and, and so, um, you know, being able to bring up these sites uh, really as like, you know, deploy and forget type environments, almost where, you know, you drop the nodes in uh, and they're super, highly available and reliable, but you don't need to send engineers out all the time to be able to change disks and manage infrastructure and, and configure networking and so on. Uh, th those are key characteristics. So, and, and then the, the final differentiation point, I think, is that, you know, having a, a centralized, simple kind of single pane of glass uh, to be able to manage um, all of this infrastructure from a central point uh, is key. And, you know, often we talk about, you know, clusters of hundreds or even thousands of sites uh, being able to, to, to manage these from a single point. And so based on all of that, I mean, it's do existing HCI stacks uh, that many of us think about off, you know, uh, the VMwares and the Nutanixes out there, uh, do they have some type of problem or challenge meeting those, those same requirements? Yeah, I, I mean, I think so. I, I think the, the key issues that we hear from customers are that, you know, whilst these are great products and, and they're great in a data center environment, you know, we, we all know them well, they're, they're widely deployed, um, where you have sort of a homogenous hardware environment uh, with, you know, small number of locations. Um, but, you know, with, with uh, in these edge environments, uh, they, they, they're simply not designed, they were never designed to be able to operate in, in that sort of environment. Um, and so that's that's one of the, the key issues that, that we hear. You know, they consume a significant amount of system resources um, just to be able to run the stack itself. Uh, often, you know, you see uh, three node minimum requirements for, for HA at the edge, um, which, you know, can significant when you're talking about thousands of sites can significantly increase your your footprint requirements, um, and and uh, you know the challenge as you as you consume as you need to reserve more resources to run uh, the, uh, the the the, um, the the service stack itself, uh, it means that you have limited resources for your application, particularly in these constrained environments where you've probably got limited cores and memory and uh, you know actually pro you know limited processing power. Um, the, uh, I mean, the second thing is the, the, the performance penalty. So uh, often, uh, you know, performance really becomes more significant as, as the form factor gets smaller and the resources are more constrained. Uh, and so um, when we combine particularly with, you know, faster NVMe flash storage, uh, which is great from a, from a power and, and a, a, um, a size uh, real estate perspective, um, but when you're actually losing up to, you know, even up to like 90% of the performance of that NVMe flash storage just by using a, a, a you know, a legacy platform, um, that's, that can be a huge loss, uh, a huge impact for those uh, kinds of environments. And that's why I think a lot of companies are resorting to running microservices on bare metal. Um, but really, that's, you know, in that process, they, they lose a lot of the great advantages that you have with the core virtualization stack. So things like resource segregation, security, and high availability in particular. Um, and then I think the third issue that I would highlight is that, you know, these legacy uh, apps that, you know, hyper-converged stacks that were designed for the data center, they weren't really designed for these deploy and forget type implementations um, where, you know, you've got a centralized pane of glass, you know, for a single management pane, 
uh, with you know highly distributed multiple sites, highly distributed uh, at many uh, edge locations. And I guess you know if we could dive in a little bit deeper, uh, tell us a little bit more about your technology called the Sunlight Next Next Visor, uh, and, and you know as you're diving in deeper, maybe give a little bit of background and tell us why it's it's unique in the industry. Yes, so um, you know, Sunlight was uh, is, is an HCI platform that was really designed first and foremost to be uh, to be able to run on these types of uh, constrained edge uh, environment platforms. So it's really perfect for this kind of edge in you know cloud out architecture. Um, we have a super small footprint, um, and so so we consume very little resources in terms of memory and CPU cores actually to run the next Pfizer platform. Um, it, it uh, you know that that also means that the that the platform overhead is extremely power efficient, um, and uh, you know add to that um, we have this great performance um, envelope in in our in our platform which enables us to achieve close to bare metal performance for fully virtualized workloads. Um, we've got support for uh, many different uh, platforms, so we support you know standard Intel uh, you know AMD processors, but also uh, full support for embedded, uh, you know, Intel Atom, embedded Xeon processors as well, which are, you know, very common in the, in these edge environments, um, and also uh, great support for ARM uh, um, processors as well. Uh, that's actually one of the uh, one of the first platforms that we added support for, and is one of the reasons that we designed the the uh, architectural changes in our virtualization stack was particularly to be able to accommodate things like embedded ARM processors, which have you know, very limited core counts, uh, access to uh, to small amounts of physical memory. Uh, so you have to be able to run super efficiently on those types of environments. Um, you know, we built this this great management framework around it, uh, which means that we can manage it all. You know, wherever your clusters are deployed. Uh, you can manage that um, in the cloud, uh, on premise, and at the edge as well. Um, and and you know we we built a uh, we're, we're um, very focused on you know infrastructure as code. Uh, so we've got a, a very solid API uh, that's accessible to anyone uh, to be able to integrate and and you know develop and deploy their own uh, application logic against against sunlight. Uh, you know, other things to point out, we've got, um, uh, you know, great support for both, um, you know, legacy virtual machine platforms. So whether that's, you know, a, a Linux a virtual machine or a Windows virtual machine. Um, but equally alongside that, we've got integrated support with uh, containers as well. So you can really get the best of both worlds uh, for these types of uh, edge environments. Um, and, and we've got support for uh, GPU pass through, um, which is, you know, increasingly being used for, you know, AI processing at the edge and, and vision use cases, for example. And then finally, the, the other big difference is security. So uh, because of the, the small footprint and the, the very small attack surface of the sunlight stack, uh, we're extremely secure. And of course, we've got all of the, the, the great isolation properties built into the virtualization stack itself. And, you know, we're hearing a lot about microservices at the edge as sort of being the way forward. And if that's the case, you know, do we really need hyperconverged infrastructure at the edge? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so, you know, that's that's an interesting question. And, you know, and I think obviously we hear a lot about microservices um, all, all over the place. You know, a lot of people are focusing on that and it's great technology and it's, and it's really good to see that um, it's being adopted and, and, and widely deployed. Um, and, and I think I would say what we're seeing is that microservices certainly are very popular at the edge, but they still only today represent a fraction of the workloads that companies are actually trying to deploy. Um, you know, there's a lot of legacy applications that still run in core virtual machines or on uh, bare metal infrastructure. Uh, and so being able to support that is really key. So having that flexibility, you know, we talk about hybrid a lot. Um, and I think that's still very much true uh, at these uh, edge environments. Um, I mean, the other thing I would say from our perspective, you know, I think running microservices uh, on, on uh, bare metal is, is, is great for performance. Um, but there are some significant trade-offs that, 
that people lose when they when they move to that you know pure bare metal deployment model, which is that you know you only have single tenancy um, on the uh, you know for the if the actual container host itself. Um, and you know, limited you know high availability and fault tolerance uh, in that environment. Um, importantly, but you know, are, I, I would say most importantly though is that you lose the security and isolation properties that the hypervisor platform uh, can offer you. Uh, so, so really, this is where you know I think running microservices on well on Sunlight, of course, but you know on a virtualization stack really is is key because it gives you the best of both worlds. With Sunlight, of course, we can offer bare metal performance that you would get with running containers directly on the bare metal uh, but with these other advantages with you know multi-tenancy high availability and fault tolerance built in out of the virtualization stack full security and isolation uh, all the remote management capabilities of the stack um, and you know being able to run on of course on you know variety of different uh, cpu architectures with um, really high performance as well, so so that that allows you to uh, to be able to drive a, you know smaller infrastructure footprint uh, and be able to manage uh, better uptime and you know manageability and security as part of that. Well, this has been a lot of great information. Uh, before we wrap things up, I just wanted to ask you, you know, what's the best way for people interested in hyperconverged infrastructure at the edge to get their hands on Sunlight Next Visor? Yep. So um, you know, it's very easy to get up and running with with Sunlight. Um, the best way to to get started is to head over to our website, uh, Sunlight.io, um, and you know, there there's there's a variety of ways to uh, you know request a trial or a demo. Um, you know, we can we can work with you or your or your your team to to get a pilot up and running very quickly. Um, we've got you know a number of different hardware deployment options where you know we can host it ourselves or we can help you get it up and running on your infrastructure. Um, but but um, you know the, the easiest way uh, above all is probably just to go straight to AWS to the AWS marketplace. If you search for Sunlight, uh, we'll pop up there straight away. Um, and you can deploy us, um, you can be up and running in minutes um, just by deploying in sunlight. Well, thank you so much, Julian. I really appreciate you spending time with us today and answering a, a couple of questions and getting us up to speed on the company, su Sunlight, the technology, NextVisor, and talking about these topics in, in Hyperconverged and The Edge. Really appreciate it. Thanks very much, David. It's my pleasure.